Final day action continues here in this Cricket West Indies Women's T20 Blaze Tournament. And we have the highly anticipated matchup between Jamaica and Leeward Islands for you this evening. The two captains at the toss, Stephanie Taylor of Jamaica and Amanda Edwards of Leeward Islands. And we have match referee, Thelma Gums. Amanda has the coin. Tails it is. Tails it is. So Taylor, you've won the toss. What are you doing and why? Uh, we're going to have a bowl. Um, it seems like a little weather around and might have a little thing in the in the pitch. So, yeah, let's see what, you know, what the pitch have to offer. Uh, you were unable to see, sweep the series in the regional 50 over version of things. How important it is for you and the girls to clean sweep this T20 Blaze tournament? Yeah, we, it's something that we spoke about, um, you know, finish well, finish on a high note. And, um, yeah, we have some players who... You know, have that. Hopefully, you know they could actually get it in this game. All right. Any changes to the, your eleven? Yeah, we have uh, three changes of Garcia, White, and someone else in, <laughs> and um, Ferran. Oh, who else is out? Oh, Father God. It's all right. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Treat all, right. It. all right. Well, all the best to you, Taylor, and congratulations by the way on winning the tournament. I don't think any team can catch you. Well, no team can catch you at this point in time. So, all the best to you in this final game. Yes. So, Amanda Edwards, you're on a losing streak with the tosses. You won't mind that. You have enough. We won't mind that if you're winning the games, but they're going to have a bat for us. What do you, what, they're going to have a ball for us. Sorry. What do you make of that decision and what would you have done? Well, we have decided to bat first, so she basically gave us what we needed. So the top order, the top orders have some plans come in, put a good amount of runs on the board, and later on we defend it. All right. Is there any change changes to your eleven? Yeah, we got two changes. We got Sanello out, Tainetta in. Um, can't remember the other one. All right. All the best to you, Amanda. Well, there you have it, Stephanie Taylor. She won the toss, and for the final time here, Jamaica will have a ball for us. That the toss is a highly anticipated encounter between these two. Jamaica on top of the table. Leeward Islands with a chance to come at least second if they are able to win here today and probably pick up a bonus point or two. At the toss, Jamaica won it. And they are going to field first. No surprises there. I'm joined by Troy Mills. How are you, Troy? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Stacey. And I'm blessed to have you giving thanks. What about you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a... Very entertaining day so far, and the entertainment continues. Jamaica, they haven't batted for us in this tournament at all, and this is the final day. And you heard the captain at the toss, she spoke about, you know, giving her players a chance to, you know, get that milestone. And I'm, I'm really happy to hear a captain speak like that. You know, it's a ve very unselfish cricket. She's thinking about her team teammates. She's thinking about giving her players the best chance to put their hands up to win certain awards up for grabs. So what we know now is Rashada Williams. She's out front with most runs, 144. And Chanel Henry is, is competing for that most wicket spot. Plafiana Millington from Guyana. She has 11 wickets. Chanel Henry has eight so she'll be hoping to pick up at least four scalps in this game to take her clear of the leaderboard today. Well, I can tell you, Lee Woods, they've never been in this position before, in second place. So even if they were to lose today, that will be a great improvement. However, no doubt they're thinking, especially with their performance, Jazara picking up a, a hat-trick, and they will want to build on that confidence. So no doubt they like to get a win. The Jamaicans, they have already won this tournament. Congratulations to them. Similarly as they would have done for the Super 50. Yes, yeah, so you see on your screen there, Shade Nation has the ball in hand. Usually what starts things off for Jamaica. And she's out today. So Nation with that first ball. The other players out, uh, Kenisha Ferran and Nisha Ann Wesom. 
no doubt Jamaica giving the younger players an opportunity. Even if they were to lose today, apart from it being psychological or statistical, that moral boost and all those nice words, they won't really be, they won't lose any sleep about that pussy. They'll certainly be aiming for a win today. You heard it at the toss from the skipper. It's important that they finish well. It's still important that they play unbeaten in this tournament. They weren't able to do so in the regional 50-over version of things. So they still have their eye on playing unbeaten and lifting the trophy. So Divya Saxena, who's on strike, Melissa Clark, her partner at the non-striker end. And of course, they will want to go through with an unblemished record. And they, they've stuck to the template that has won them all of their matches so far in this T20 Blaze tournament, and that is chasing. This one is driven firmly down the ground, work to do for Natasha McLean. You can't reel it in, and first four off the bat of Divya Saxena. Brilliant diving effort by, by McLean, but perhaps she's an inch and a half. Well, actually, she would have gotten there, but that will very well go down as a misfield. She made the effort to get around. So after four dots, four runs to Saxena. Last ball coming up in this over. A bit short, and this has been pulled to the square leg area and back to back boundaries to finish things off here for Leeward Islands. After the first over, they are eight without loss. A lovely way to sh start. Well executed shot, confident. Lovely boundary, backward square. So Saxena, she she's off the mark with two boundaries. Leewards after the first over, they are eight without loss, and I'm certain they wouldn't mind that being the net run rate, the current the net run rate for the for the inning, but we haven't seen that as yet, so far. Yeah, so Chanel Henry, one of those players I, I spoke about, a captain, she stressed on the importance of giving her players a chance um, to meet, to get that milestone that they're aiming for. And Chanel Henry, she's second on the most wickets chart. And Plafiana Millington, as I, I told you guys earlier, she has 11. So Chanel Henry with ball in hand to Melissa Clark. First delivery. Certainly not where she'll be aiming for. It's a wide to start things off for her. And we had some rain between this match, the previous match, and this one. We have lovely sunshine now. Some dark clouds moving slowly, extremely slowly westward. They are on our left in the east. This one is whipped, fine leg. So a bit too sta straight to start for Henry. She is trying to angle the ball back into the right-hander with an iron and taking out those stumps. And just a bit too straight to start. Let's see if she can adjust and get her length here and her line. This one is played into the cover area so Melissa Clark gets off the mark they're looking for two and they get it quite comfortably in the end Selena White playing into this game it's nice that they're looking running that first one hard looking for a second putting pressure on the fielder that perhaps should have been done a lot more in the tournament Hit hard, straight to Henry, and she puts it down. So a chance goes up begging early. Straight back to Chanel Henry. She can't blame anyone. Doesn't it was all on her there. Doesn't have anyone. Regulation catch a sitter. It doesn't really come much easier than that for a ball and court. Perhaps she was not expecting it. I don't know. But I'm thinking as a bowler, you should always expect a return catch. It was hard. She was running. It was in her follow through. Wasn't able to get the balance to grab it properly. So 
back on here. Full delivery. Leading edge being squirted out to point. And that would have extended her, her wicked take. But she'll just have to work again. Full driven to Taylor. She gets around nicely in the end. They, they managed to come back for come through for a single. A little miscommunication there in the middle of the track. They will of course want to work on that. Slip backward point, cover sweeping on the boundary. Yeah, so one more delivery remaining in this over for Henry. Cover mid off mid on. An edge. Flies pass for a slip. So a single to finish the second. Five runs off it. Leeward Islands. 12, 13, sorry, without loss. Some may argue that that was a, a well-guided edge, educated gadget and some others may argue well all the parts of the bats would be made to be used so on that occasion <laughs> using the edge but picking up a single nonetheless yes yeah, so nation will get a second over in the power play she didn't finish well in her first they were able to pick up back-to-back -back boundaries after facing four dots new one islands She'll be looking to tighten things up here in this third over of the power play. Bit too wide to start. And Saxon is all too happy to watch that go through. Wide signal by umpire Vicky Daniel. Shot. Pulled again. This time straight to the fielder. So a bit too short to start to divya saxena and adult she will be a little mad with herself thinking that she should have done a lot better with it yeah should have waited on it a bit and play it a bit later to get it to the right of that field on the boundary had enough time to wait on it it's one nonetheless Oh, she's chopped it on this time. So Nation strikes and Melissa Clark has to go back. And after speaking, they would, well, going a little, stepping back to the onside, trying to give herself room as opposed to coming across. And we've seen quite a few batters being bowled off the, the inner edge. And... Uh, Losing their first wicket, the Leeward Islands. 15 for one. And indeed the Jamaicans, they wouldn't care how they, they play their shots once they get the wickets. Definitely won't be thinking about how they get the wickets once they get them in a hurry and quickly. So Shanisha Hector, new batter in. It'll be interesting to see how she approaches things here in the middle. She is in good hitting form, but I find sometimes when she starts, she's just, just a bit too anxious to go at it early to the bowlers, not giving herself time to, to, to see things and get her sight to get herself in just a little bit more. Sometimes right away she starts, and she has an opportunity here now with Saxena to give her team a good start in the power play. She just has to give herself a chance. Hector? Two fielders out, mid wicket and long on. And of course, the skipper would want these two bat and bat and, and bat. They've made the first team to go beyond the 130 runs. And they would have won that match. So they'd like to repeat that. Wide and left alone. Also. 
And we saw the gain. We saw the gain is going beyond that one thirty mark, picking up a bonus point. And as we're saying off here, oh, trash to the covers. Shot. That's a lovely shot to the cover. Quite in control, powerfully struck, extremely confident indeed. Very positive start for her. Picking up a boundary is Hector. A very powerful strike off the ball. And obviously that will build her confidence. Yeah, too short and wide there from Nation. Fuller at that time to finish the over. A wicket in it. Leeward Islands are 24 1 after three overs. Very successful indeed for the Jamaicans. And yes, they'll be bubbling with confidence, having won both versions of this female champion, Cricket West Indies' female championship here in St. Kitts. Back to back year. The years last year and uh, this year, the tournament, both tournaments being played here in St. Kitts. And Leewards, they will want to build a sound inning here it's all the way across Saxena badly lying with down leg and she picks up four four runs so good use of the crease there from Saxena on that occasion to pick up a boundary she basically walks across the stump Saxena and yes it wasn't the best of deliveries Very big stride across. I know getting most wickets will be at the back of the mind of Chanel Henry, but she still has to remember all the good things she's done so far in the tournament. And I've seen her picking up eight wickets. That one off the edge again. Getting one, Saxena. She's a live wire also. She's always looking for that run. But Hector definitely not interested. I don't think the Leewards would want a run out at any point. And there has been tremendous improvement in this 20 overs. Because in the Super 50, we were seeing quite a few run out. We have two cruise ships in today. And we've had our tourist season set to go down go down to the the end of April. Oh, lofted nicely. Magnificent shot over the head of Stephanie Taylor. At mid off, a shot of class there from Shawnisha Hector. And quite effort effortlessly, deliberately going airily, knowing she would have cleared that feeler and picking up a boundary. So that's two boundaries she's scored so far, Hector. She wouldn't want to get carried away, of course. Oh, that was an even better shot, but a hand of Chanel Henry stops it from going for four. That would have been four. Well struck, only to find Henry in the way. Yeah, and so far what we're seeing of Shanisha Hector, what she wasn't able to do against Winwood Islands the other night is she's playing the ball and it's merit. Simple cricket. She's not being reckless in the inning so far. She's being watchful and she's putting away every bad delivery and looking at every opportunity for score. There's a change in the field. Cover comes up and long off goes back.
Whoops it across the line this time. The fielder tries to get there, but can't stop it. And that's a third four in the over now of the bat of Shawnisha Hector. Not the best of lines, drifting down the leg side. And she was able to just clip that one off the pads. So, Leeward Islands, they're 33 for one after four overs. Captain Stephanie Taylor thinks it's time for herself to be introduced into the attack. Looking for a single sack, Sina. Certainly not on. Always looking for that single, which is a very positive approach. But she will have to be extremely careful that she doesn't commit too early and cannot get back. But it's a very nice way to approach. Down the ground. Not a lot of power on that occasion, so just a single. And it brings Hector back into strike. She has actually has a hat-trick, three fours. Drives it a bit, bit uppishly to that field that shot. Extra cover, just falling short of her. This one is sky, this one is in the air. Henry's coming over it and coming under it, sorry. And Hector has to go back after an enterprising knock, I'll say. She has to go. Giving it away, really. She was looking so good with, with, with the way she's, she was playing, confident, striking the ball well, and just playing one a little uppishly hard, and I'll say giving it away. Yeah, she tried to go over that fielder at mid-off, but didn't really get close to it, Hector, to execute the shot well enough. So Craxton, the new batter in. very big promotion for her she's batting she has been batting oh five six she dropped uh, a few slots down but brought up into the number four position and she too will be bubbling from confidence with her hat trick The only hat trick of the tournament. Still time for there to be others. Yeah, she has a job to do at the back though. Just turned eight we eighteen but two weeks ago. During the, the super fifties. She bowls right, bats left. And obviously the crowd will be behind her. So a dot to finish, one run from it, and the important wicket of Hector, who is going quite well for Leeward Islands. After five overs, 34 for two. It's important for Leeward Islands now. They, they, their run rate is, is healthy at this point in time. Yes, they have lost two wickets. But it's important for them to just keep things going. Keep finding ways to score in this innings. Keep finding ways to score in this innings. As Troy Mill steps out. And Shakira Selman will step in.
Good afternoon, Stacey. Good afternoon, viewers. So one over remaining in the power pill, Selena White, with ball in hand. The third, the cover, two fielders on the boundary. It's good to see Selena White being given an opportunity in this Jamaica side once again. Last year she was the standout bowler. Of course, that was in the absence of Chanel Henry, who was carrying an injury. Good to see that they've given opportunities to a few other girls. Yeah, and of course, added to that, Wilmot has been bowling really well also for Jamaica. It's really hard for her to get in the team as a pacer, but it's, it's good that Taylor has given her a chance in this game. Yeah, Whitey has started very full on this occasion, but she's normally someone who gets the ball to bounce when she gets the right line. Of course, very tall as well. with Offord, you see the extension of the arms from umpire Joel Wilson. So just to inform you of the players out for Leeward Islands, Therese Parker, Seneldo Willett, and Cheyenne Moses not playing today. Driven into the gap, but there's a field on the boundary. They're looking for two. Excellent running from these two batters in the middle. Yeah, the fielder is deep on the boundary, so if it isn't hit with a lot of power, the two can be on if you run hard enough. So that was really good awareness from those two batters. Yeah, also a reminder that the fielder is throwing against the wing. It has to be a very strong throw. Another quick single. This time to the right of the field that I made on. outside edge and past the diving Rashida Williams into the boundary class and gets off the mark. Yeah, quite fortuitous indeed. Just past the diving hand of Rashida, Rashida Williams. She gets off the mark with the boundary. Leeward Islands, 42 for two after the power play. A good power play in terms of runs. Yes, they've lost the two wickets, but the scoring rate is very healthy for Leeward Islands, up to seven runs per over now. Yeah, certainly they'll be happy with this start, even though they've lost the two wickets. Question now will be if they can continue to push on with the field spread. Taylor opts to have three fielders on the boundary. Long on deep square. And the backwards career. Oh. Slate miss field by Nation allows the Bahers to cross for an easy single. Yeah, this is a period of the game where Leeward Islands have to say to themselves, I have 42 runs in the power play. Yes, two wickets are down. So now they can look to 
walk things around, pick up the quick singles, yes, when a bad ball comes, they put it away, but they cannot afford to face a lot of dot deliveries. And that's important. If they are to put on a, a big total here against Jamaica, there you go, right away. So, so areas like that, you can access now because the field is spread. So getting as many runs as possible, less dot balls against these, these, these Jamaican bowlers. And have the captain, Stephanie Taylor, thinking about her field and if she needs to bring someone in and then that's an opportunity for them now to try and take a boundary if the delivery is there to take it from so there you go nicely done by Saxena it's an area that she's collected a lot of runs from in the tournament just by playing with soft hands to the square leg area and it's also an area where other batters from other teams perhaps should have picked up more runs Good smart cricket by Satsina. Low full toss. Driven firmly. But straight to extra cover. Driven to the left of that field at that time. You're looking for two. I don't think it's on. McLean is pretty quick across the ground. And it's just a single. So that's a good adjustment from young Claxton. Delivery forced straight to the fielder. That time getting it to the left of the fielder to pick up a single. Slate's fumble by Stefani Taylor at the end of the over. Allows another single. Five from it. Leaver's swimming 47 for two at the end of seven. Jazara Claxton's mother looking on. She's always here supporting her daughter whenever she can. At the front in the brown. She'll be happy about this promotion. I'm hoping that Jazara can make the most of it. Selena wait to continue. Four fielders on the boundary this time. Long off the cover, the third. And fine leg. With the field spread, it means there are more gaps. There are bigger gaps for the batters to hit. Driven up Ishley. And Shadi Nation can only get a right hand to it. But she parries it over the top. They cross for a single. Satsina survives. So another chance goes down in this innings. It was a top chance. I think she misjudged it initially. Trying to go back. Wasn't able to reel it in. End up flying over her head, Nation. Yeah, certainly missed time to jump on that occasion. Perhaps had extra time to take another step back before she leaped into the air. Satsina on to 23. Good angle to Claxton so far. Length is key though. Because I remember watching her in a few games and she was able to drive a few balls between extra cover and mid off there is a ring on the circle on that off side pulls the knife back 
Clarkson is unable to punch it straight to Taylor. I asked recover. And yeah, umpire Joe Wilson just having a word with Selena White about running in that protected area. It's good over so far from White. Just needs to close it out. It's just one run from it. Dot to end the eighth. 48 for two. Okay, Wilmot replaces Captain Taylor from the media center end. I think it's the first time she's bowling from this end in this competition, Kate Wilmot. She has deep third, deep fine leg, and deep square. Good quick single. Turned again to the fielder at sharp mid wicket. She also has a long one. And we saw where Fraser bowled in that game against Windward Islands this morning. She was able to extract a lot of bongs from this end. So they have the field set. They have fine leg back. They're pushing back mid-wicket as well. So they'll be hoping for something similar from young Kate Wilmot. She does bowl that hard length into the surface. So if she's able to, we'll see if she's able to get a lot of bounce as Fraser did this morning. She is normally able to get bounce from either end. Well pitched up. And as the driver was talking about from Claxton, just to the left of that extra cover fielder. But there is a long off on the boundary. So feel well protected. That single brought up the 50 as well for Leeward Islands. So they're 50 now for two in the ninth over. Punch nicely, but up to the field at mid off. Satsuna continues to look to rotate the straight. So she's almost on the move after every shot. early call goes to the far end Claxton makes it safely reference that scene again putting pressure on the fielder at mid off even even though she's in the circle and even though she's supposed to be one of the better fielders in this Jamaica site 
cracks her a ball before she was actually looking for the single, but Claxon wasn't aware of it. On that occasion, both batters up for it and they get it quite easily. This time it's Claxton looking for a second. Satsina not alert to it. Sharp again and wide. Dies on the way through to Rochelle Williams. She does well. Dot to end the ninth over. 52 for two. We are dismissed batters Melissa Clark and Shawnisha Hector. We have a change in bowling. Jessica Garcia playing today. Gets a chance with the ball in hand. The left arm orthodox spinner, Jessica Garcia. And she'll be bowling to the left handed Jazara Claxton. Interesting that Stephanie Taylor has opted to go to Garcia from that far in. Means Claxton can hit with the spin, if there is any spin, with the wing. So that Kokorna area could be a hot area. There is a deep mid wicket, a deep backward square, and a long one on the boundary on the leg side. The long field on the boundary on the offside is deep cover. Tries nicely. But well fielded by Garcia, tumbling to her left. To the left of Shadi Nation at backward point. Will Mott does good on the boundary. Keeps it down to one. A nice powerful throw back into Rashida Williams, right over the stumps as well. Yeah, she's a pretty athletic fielder, Kate Wilmot. I thought two was on for a second. The angle it was hit, but she got around there quite quickly to cut that off. Both batters settling for one in the end. Right hander comes on strike. There's a deep battery square, a deep may wicket, long off and cover. Too straight. No s wide eventually signal by on Pedro <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> Took so long to signal that. Yeah, I need to adjust her line now to the Left hand, the right-handed batter. As she continues with this left arm around the wicket angle. Nicely driven down to long off. Wait. 
changing field. The cover comes into the circle. Mid off goes back to the long off boundary. Good cricket once more. Hitting the sweepers very often. Seeing a shift in momentum in this match. Huge appeal and Jessica Garcia picks up a wicket against the run of play, really. I mean was quite a stifled appeal from feel from from the keeper and the bowler. Actually, yeah. Rashida Williams went to immediately. It was Garcia <laughs> who didn't seem to have noticed that there was an edge given by umpire Joe Wilson. Satsina goes for 26 and at the drinks break, Leeward Islands women 56 for three. Yeah. Able to add 14 runs since the power play. So 56 for three and we'll take a break here as well. losing a wicket just on the brink of drinks break and there seems to be something yeah five fielders are the outside voice, the circle she was pointing it out to the umpires very vigilant indeed and they were actually five one down here on the the long arm boundary, one on the cover, third man, fine leg, and there was a deep square. And the umpire is now signaling no ball and a free hit. A very vigilant indeed by Boyce. Yeah, on unaccept unacceptable at this level. You can't afford to make mistakes like that. You're only allowed four fielders outside of the circle. There were five. So that's a no ball with a free hit. This one drilled, but straight to the field right along off. So it only results in one extra run. Claxton, she's on 11 from 16. She's going to be, no doubt, thinking about stepping it up a bit. And we are batting with Saxena. The appetite for a quick single was there. I'm not certain that will be the case here with Boyce. She will have to be very mindful that Boyce is not as quick as Saxena. 
Traxton, very quick indeed, a national athlete. Tri-dimensional cricket. She's the captain of the St. Kitts and Nevis on the 20 football team. And she should be going to Grenada this weekend for the Carifta Games representing St. Kitts and Nevis. My understanding, the, the only, well, were she to be going, the, she would have been doing the Hepathlon, which she gave away a gold medal, so to speak, last year by an infringement in one of the events. Full toss, guided down to the third. Was it above the waist? There is some communication between the umpires. And they said no, it tipped just before. We have beautiful sunshine here at Warner Park. The sun is out in all its glory. Play having been held up for a few minutes. Well, 45 minutes actually. Because of rain between the first match and this. And the soft spot at the, the bowlers run up. Short and pulled straight to Chanel Henry moving around to her left at mid on. Claxton goes. Kate Wilmot gets her first wicket. Giving it away. She was tempted. It was short. She got back on the back foot and didn't quite have control of it. And all the fielder basically had to do was just put her both hands in the air and pluck it out. Yeah, Jazara Claxton dismissed for 11. Leeward's women, 59 for 4 at the end of 11. So Jamaica really coming back. Leeward's 8 for 1 at the end of the first. 13, 8, eight without loss, 13 without loss, 20 without loss, 34 for 2 at the end of the fourth, 44 for 2. And they've been tightening up the bowling, the Jamaicans. So, so far, the decision to win the toss and bat paying tremendous dividends for Jamaica. Yeah, it brings Amanda Edwards, captain, to the crease. She's played a few handy knocks throughout this competition. Well, this is a very important partnership. And if ever Lee Woods would need a handy knock from her, it is today. It is now. Sharon Wade by Garcia. Boyce plays it too early and up dragging it to the field of extra cover. Dived over it. Taylor cleans up. Third man backward point. Cover sweeping on the boundary. Is a cover long off, long on, short mid wicket, forward a screw on the boundary. The 
This one much too straight, and it's helped down to the boundary by Amanda Edwards. She gets off the mark. And Leewards will need quite a few more like that from her. Or boys. Not the healthiest of positions to be in. The important thing is they are there. And once you're there, runs will come. Five runs so far from this over. This one struck firmly over the head of the bowlers. Janelle Henry tries to get a run from long on. Cannot get there. One bounce into the boundary. Well struck straight. Eerily. Perhaps were it to be a little flat, it, might have, it may have carried over the boundary. But that wasn't to be. But the Leewards will be glad for the four from the uh, skipper, Amanda Edwards. Yeah, nine from the over so far. One delivery remaining. Sharp pulled <laughs> just to the right of Selena White at Sharp made wicket. So ten from the over. Leewards women, 69 for four at the end of 12. And that's, that was White at mid-wicket. She chipped across, wasn't able to get there. It was just about shoulder height. And Lee was 69 for four with eight overs to go. The projected score of 115. Having started at eight runs and over. And then the middle overs, some tight pulling from Jamaica. Giving up four runs in one over, four in another. Ones and twos. Sure, this one is pulled behind square work on the boundary for Lena Scott to do. She's been very good bye bye, bye bye. in the outfield, Lena Scott. Remember, she normally dons the gloves. She was the second keeper in that West Indies on the 19th side that went to South Africa for that inaugural on the 19 Ladies World Cup. She's been very swift across the boundaries. Over pitch, driven nicely between extra cover and mid off and into the boundary. Very good looking shot indeed. Well timed, boys. And picking up a, pat a boundary. Yeah, she didn't try to overhit that delivery for any spice. Lent it through it nicely. Cut her shape and placed it in the gap between extra cover and mid-off. Shot of elegance. Nice comeback by Wilmot. Pulling boys forward defensively. Third man backward point, cover, extra cover, mid off. Mid wicket, backward of square on the boundary. Seven, six from. Five from the over, that is.
Yeah, very good cricket. Nicely stroked back past the bowler by Boyce. A good bit of fielding by you know, Henry to get around and keep that down to one. Had she missed it, it may have gone close to the boundary. Not certainly it would have had enough legs to get across, but. Short. And skipper Edwards wondering why didn't she get something out of that? 75 for four at the end of 13. Shady Nation back into the attack. Sent no two overs from the media center in at the start of the power play. Goes short this time. And that's classy by Rennie's boys. It won't go all the way to the boundary, but it was a very good looking shot. Indeed. She went eerily, deliberately, clearing that fielder uh, in the cover region. But not really the power to get to the boundary. Standing tall was Boyce, as short as she is. One fourteen is the projected score at this rate. And there's an appeal and she's given out LBW. Yeah, Shadi Nation with a second wicket. Boys looking to hike this one into the leg side. Load appeal. And a judged LBW by umpire Joel Wilson. Looked to have been missing like something though. It did crash into that front pad first. Which seemed to have been planted outside of leg stump before it hit the bat leg. I was thinking along those lines. Obviously, the umpire would have thought differently. Yeah, you can also see where the wicket keeper has gone. She's sh moving laterally to collect that one down the leg side. Boyce, though, has to go. Lever is now 77 for five. Kimberly Anthony, the new batter in. And the Leewards continue to lose wickets. Frequently as it were. Teenage Anthony, a lot is depending on her here. She has shown that she can beat the ball. And she will pick up a single here. Three runs off that over. 78 for five at the end of 14. And the Jamaicans They'll be happy with this at this stage. Perhaps thinking that they may have given away a run or two extra. But picking up five wickets with the key batters back in the pavilion, basically. Captain Edwards, she will have to lead from the front now. And no doubt she would have told Anthony, I need you to stay here and support me. 
good communications, early communication. Chanel Henry back into the attack, this time from the media center. Eh? First spell cost her 18 runs. Through Rashida Williams. And it will run away into the boundary. So four boys added to the total. Lee Woods, of course, would take the ones anywhere to get them. And the skip won't really be the happiest with Williams. Mr. Appeal, that one clearly missing the extent. He was in Virgin Territory, third in this competition. Having sat at the bottom at the end of the Super 50 this year and last year as well. Slapped back past the bowler, fielders. Come around from long off and long on. Nation keeps it down to one. Yeah, they've gone from never winning a game in this competition before to winning two. And now they're in a position where they can play second in this tournament. Either way, they're certainly proud of what they've achieved. I spoke to Amanda Edwards, the captain, before the game, and she said she was most pleased by the result against Barbados. Obviously, Barbados were the defending champions last year. And they would have basically pulled defeat from victory. Of victory from defeat, that is. Yeah, just a slight break here. Something seems to have gone into the eye of Amanda Edwards. Lee Woods starting today in third with nine points. Jamaica would have already won the championship before this on 17. Trinidad and Tobago on second with nine points, a better net run rate than the Lee Woods. Guyana would have been fourth. They won their game. Winwards would have been fifth with four. Barbados sixth with four as well. The, penul the penultimate match of this CG United Daffabet T20 Blaze. And Cricket West Indies must be highly commended for putting on this competition and the St. Kitts Cricket Association hosting on behalf of Leeds, on behalf of the West Indies, they would need to be proud themselves. Slap once more to the left of Shady Nation this time. Again, she does well. Amanda Edwards seems to have lots of time to get behind these de deliveries from Chanel Henry. She does seem to be down on pace today, Henry. She sent down many overs across the two tournaments. Having a much better season this year. Trinidad and Tobago will be coming up against Barbados. The final match of this competition. Short again and struck more firmly this time. And it gets past Shady Nation that long off into the boundary. Good batting by Amanda Errors. Definitely capitalizing on that. And she made no mistake whatsoever. 
a few shots came down just to the left of Nation, who kept cutting off anything else but the single. But this time, extremely wide of her and being able to find that boundary. Yeah, Amanda Iwer is striking at above 180 now, 15 from just eight deliveries. Leroy swimming 89 for five at the end of 15. 119 the projected target. So at this stage, 130, not on the table. However, we're getting into the happy, we're now into the happy hour overs. The last five as it were. And Anthony banging that one past the boulder, but he'd only get a single. As I say, bye bye to Shakira Selman. A single being had. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And the Leewards. At this stage, the. Uh, the, th the target they're thinking of is getting past that 100 total, getting into triple figures, and then trying to squeeze as many as they can. And whacking it is eerily. Is it going to beat the long off -field? Yes, it does. It's Anthony. Yes, Anthony with some lusty blows since she's come to the wicket. And that one was struck powerfully over the leaping Kate Wal Wilmot for six valuable runs. And you're talking about the target that they're looking at is getting to 100. They are getting to 100. It's how many more they'll get after 100. They have four overs to play with after these two deliveries. And with Anthony in such aggressive form, you just can't tell. third team to get above well two teams have gotten above 130 so far were they able to reach the Leeward Islands and that's a, a long word yeah they were able to get 239 in their first match Leeward Islands Kate Wilmot with ball in hand. He's bowled three overs, 13 runs, and picked up that wicket of Jazara Claxton. Final over for her in this innings. Played down the ground by Kimberly Anthony. Has come out with positive intent. Looking to score, looking to go big as well. Powerful shoulders is Anthony. And she's supporting her captain. And these two will want to see the Leeward Islands much further along. Amanda Edwards. Yeah. Cover is up in the circle. Amanda Edwards, she uses her reach quite nicely. It could be an opportunity for her 
to get it over that infield on the cover area. There you go. She tries to attempt it this time. Two straight. Henry runs around and drops it. So a drop chance and they pick up two as well. Well, she tried to go over the infield, but just got it a bit too high on the bat, and it went straight up in the air. Henry making a valiant attempt to get to it, got there quite easily, but spills it in the end. The second of the match for her, she would have flowed a, a relatively easy ball and caught in her first over. And a hundred comes up as well for the Leeward Islands. Play to cover. Formerly hit there by Captain Amanda Edwards. Somewhat consistent. The Leewards 50 for 2 after 8.1 overs. 101 for 5 after 16.3 overs. Pulls it this time. Cries of 2 from the dugout. They'll get it now. They were not looking for two these two batters, but they were able to pick it up by way of a, a, a bit of fumble by the field of their Selena White. Not the quickest between the stumps is Anthony. So perhaps resigning to the fact that we'll only have one. But you still have to play the game hard. You still have to be aware. You still have to run that first one hard. Putting the fielder under pressure. Yeah, slaps this one. To the left of long off. So there's that reach I'm talking about for Amanda Edwards. She's a lot of hands. Don't use her feet a lot. The over comes to an end. 104 for five. Three overs remaining. Yeah, she's pretty strong. She uses her reach well. She should be looking to get it over the infield. But what she needs to do is... Look to open the bat face some more to get it over the infield rather than a closed bat face. That's allowing it to come straighter. So she's on strike to face Nation. 18 deliveries to be bold. Target score of 122. Looks to give herself room to get it through that cover area. Too much room given and she misses that so a dot to start things off for this final over up nation right, Dino, right, Dino, right, Dino. now with over 100 now on the board we've seen a, a total of 117 didn't trouble jamaica in this tournament swan played to the left of taylor he runs around and cut it off but he still managed to get through for one so they should be looking at getting at least 125 from here so they should be asking themselves, where can I squeeze out 20 to 25 more runs? Firstly, 25 more to secure that bonus point. Huge appeal. Turned down by umpire Joel Wilson. And of course, one way would be to try and get a single from every ball at least. Yes, yeah, certainly minimizing dots it's a, is a key part of getting to that 130. Nice to play it. Oh, there's a Kimberly is sent back by Amanda Edwards. I thought uh, uh, an overthrow was on there, but Captain Taylor gets around quite easily to keep it to a dot delivery. So five ball, balls bowl in this over. Just a single from it. Okay. Not a good over for Leeward Island so far. Powered it over the head of Stephanie Taylor. The field around the run. Can they get two? They're coming back. It's a strong throw. You get two quite easily looking for a third. It's certainly not on. Going for the end that Anthony is running to. Yeah, so 30 runs from 26 deliveries, this partnership. Three runs coming from that 18th over, 107 for five targeted score has dropped to the target score has dropped the projected score dropped to 119 a very good over for Jamaica on that occasion three runs and they'll take that anytime three runs at the death so to speak a 
Yes. It's, it's could Bab, the Leeward Islands get close or on or about that 130. Destination, sorry, Henry, to finish her quarter of overs. She's been the most expensive bowler for Jamaica so far in this innings. She'll be hoping to pick it up, pick up a wicket or two. She hasn't done that so far in this innings. It's a good ball to start. Good result for Jamaica. The Leeward Islands, not so. Indeed, and Skipper Edwards, not out thinking about where her next set of runs will come from, how they will come. Singles, boundaries, they'll be happy with some boundaries. Gives herself some room. And uh, she may get one here. Now it's an edge that goes away for four. So lucky here by Amanda Edwards that that didn't go back onto the stump. But the result is four, and they'll definitely take that Leeward Islands. Definitely. They wouldn't mind getting a, a few more of that, provided the result is the same. Boundary, no wicket lost. 25 from 20 is Edwards. Both these batters will want to push on. Slaps it down to long on. Anthony now on strike. She has shown that she has aggressive intentions. She definitely has hitting capabilities. Kimberly Anthony. We've seen her hit the ball hard straight down the ground. She's quite powerful there. Doesn't make a great connection on that time. An inside edge that flies to the onside. Just a single. Looking for the second was Anthony. Being very ambitious on that occasion. Yeah, well, that's okay. You know, you want to see them looking to score because had the fielder, you know, fumbled and the, the opportunity was there to run through and take a second. Can't get it past short mid wicket. And the Jamaicans doing well, really. Notwithstanding, they are six runs from this over. Yeah, at one point in time, the projected score was at 146, and that was in the power play for Leeward Islands. And that was just up to 120. This time, she latches on to it. Massive hit goes all the way from Captain Amanda Edwards. Much needed boundary. We were saying she's thinking where she, where and how she's going to get them. And she's showing us just exactly what the plan is. So a six to finish off. They're now up to 119 for five. 11 more to secure a bonus point. Can they get to 130? Leeward Islands, it'll be at the back of their minds. It will also pose a challenge to this Jamaica team. The first time they'll be chasing more than 130 in this in this T20 Blaze tournament we've seen two sixes so far in the innings and each has been struck at it by the two players there so it shows that they can get it done will they have the opportunity to get it done yeah, so 12 runs coming from that last over and Lee was wouldn't mind getting another double figure set of runs here tries to play it this across the line it's a dot ball jamaica mind that the leeward's team in the dugout extremely vocal at this point swings it across the line amanda edwards rushed through for a single they get it quite easily so good thinking from the captain she wants to get on strike she managed to hit that six in the last ball of the penultimate mm. over. But she's taking it on 120 up now for Leeward Islands. Gives herself some room, smashes it down the ground. 
Okay, we'll, we'll cut it off. So just to one. Could they get nine in three? It's doable. Best three, you're going. Best three. The Jamaicans, they are aware of what their plan might be. Yeah, really, really smart bowling from Taylor. <laughs> I was just <laughs> saying to myself, these two batters are looking to swing in one direction and they're giving themselves room to the next side. So just throw one up wider and there you go again. Stefani Taylor, all of her experience coming to the fore here. So just taking it away from where they're aiming, taking it away from their swinging arc, Taylor. So really smart bowling from her so far. Can she close it out? Three, three runs so far from this over. One ball remaining. Nothing to lose at all. The was on this occasion. Stands her ground this time, Amanda Edwards. They're they are going to run for two. They're looking for two. Lena Edwards, the Lena Scott, sorry, does well, but she cannot keep it to one. So 124 Leeward Islands. Jamaica, they'll need 125 runs for victory. In the end, Leeward might have been thinking where we would have lost those other six runs to get that bonus point. But that is the end of it. They did well. Started off with a high run rate and it constantly fell. At one point, the target was 113. The projected target score was 113. But getting up to 124. And there is the adage, runs on the board are runs on the board. It's now up to the Jamaican team to go and defend it. And, and get the score. Leewards, on the other hand, it's their job now to go and defend it. And no doubt they'll want be wanting to see some teamwork here. And they'll try to cut out the misfielding. We've seen some no run turn into ones or twos. And in certain instances, four. So we a few
Welcome back to the Cricket West Indies Women's T20 Blaze, the second encounter between Jamaica and Leeward Islands. Just to remind you, Jamaica won the toss, decided to bowl first. Leeward, Leeward Islands in reply, racked up 124 runs. Jamaica, they have 125 runs for victory. Today, of course, is the last day for this tournament, but action continues around the region. Under 15 Rising Stars Boys Tournament kicks off tomorrow in Antigua. So, lots of cricket around the Caribbean. And of course, the big one coming up in June. World Cup, you ready for that action, Troy? Definitely. I'm hoping I might be able to take in a game or two. Surely, but think you have to finish things off here first. As Shawnisha Hector has the ball in hand. Regular opening pair for Jamaica, Rashada, Rashada Williams and Natasha McLean. Williams with most runs in this tournament, 144 to her name. Whips it to start to short mid-wicket. Timed it quite well there. And the cricket is also happening in terms of the senior levels, the regional 4 day competition. Some exciting games played last round the early lead with the early leaders win with islands losing their two matches last two matches outright delivery ill-directed delivery on the pads headed down to the leg side the fielder pulls it in wait on the signal from the umpire and it's a leg bias so two leg bias to start things off here for jamaica and of course, they're going to be looking to run for every opportunity. And Leewards, they can ill afford any bad fielding, any misfielding. Yeah, they'll have to be pretty sharp here in this contest, Leeward Islands. Whips away, walk to the leg side, sorry. She'll get off the mark, Shayla Williams. Two runs to her name. And she extends her lead on the lead board. McLean at the non-striker. Very powerful hit off the ball as well. Looking for a quick single. Not on. Yes, and Jamaica, I, I think they'll say to themselves, they didn't have the best day out with the ball in hand and in the field as well. There were a number of drop catches. And I think they'll want to have a clinical performance with the bat to close things off here in, the, in this tournament. Their last game of the tournament, of course, today being the last day. That's the lone and white signal. And technically, they are not under any pressure, so to speak. They have already won the championship. However, they will want to end this tournament on a high, a clean sweep. We had Jamaica looking to play on beaten Leeward Islands. Trying to see if they can get to at least second in this tournament. Nicely done there by Rashida Williams. Nice soft hands to get a single and get off strike. Very, very good work there. And we didn't see much of that in the Leeward's innings. They were basically trying to whack everything out of the park. And there's always going to be that argument. Should you go whacking or should you try to dab here and push there with soft hands and, soft hands and get a single? Played officially in the air to Kimberly, who accepts it gracefully. Shanisha Hector strikes, and the big hitting Natasha McLean has to go back. First ball. And things are really rolling for the Leewards. They'll be glad for that dismissal. And uh, Natasha, she walks back to the pavilion quite dejectedly. And it's going to be the, one of the longest walks anyone can have on the field. Yeah, they already got six runs off that over. McLean looking to go over. 
that mid off fielder. So a good start for Leeward Islands. They'll be happy to see the back of Natasha, Natasha McLean. 6 for 1 after the first over. And of course, they will be excited, elated. But they can't get complacent. Yes, and the Leeward Islands, they'll be very proud. And I'm sure the nation will be proud as well what they've been able to accomplish in this T20 tournament. They managed to wi be win two games and they'll be hoping to close out against the champions. That'll be a massive boost to their confidence in terms of looking at the development of cricket in St. Kitts. Yes, that'll be very important because they did beat the defending champions. The, their first victory a match perhaps where they would have poured that victory out of the jaws of defeat. And the young Jazara. So Rosal Leibold, bowler from the other end, right away nation off the mark, plays that between point and cover point. Get off the mark with, oh sorry, that was Williams on strike. I, I apologize to you. So Williams getting a single, now nation is on strike. And Jazari entrusted with the last over, having to defend, I think it was something like 17 runs, was it? And she was able to do that, denying Barbados that victory. Oh, between bat and pad there, Nation Survives should be called by. So a by there to start, but an interesting delivery from Rosal Leibold. Indeed. No doubt wondering what, how, that, how that missed. It was very slow. She took all the pace off of it. Driven firmly to the left at that fielder at short cover. But they get a single. So Shada Williams, she's been striking the ball quite nicely to start. Timing it well also. So good signs for her early in this innings. Yes, Nation over Nation had a pretty decent fifty over tournament. She hasn't really found her groove in the T twenty version of things, so I know she'll be looking to finish off on a high here against the Leeward Islands. It's no one ever, according to one of those famous singers. So a heavily stacked offside field. It's a wall right there right now. She'll be looking to pierce that. So one kept a bit low also. So Leibold now being used in the power play in the last game, we were wondering why they didn't use her, use her early, earlier. We saw that she came on and picked up two wickets at the back end, but all a bit too late for Leeward Islands. She walked to the on side, long on in fact, and she's off the mark, she the nation, over completed, Jamaica 10 for 1. And the Leewards, they are definitely having a moving around quite comfortably with a lot of energy. And quite rightfully so. Yes, they, they, they have to do that. They have to keep the energy levels up. Have to keep their fielding sharp as well. The scoring rate required is six and about six and a half now for Jamaica. They're scoring at five runs per over now. So Leeward Islands has to f have to find a way to squeeze Jamaica. Have to find a way to curtail their run scoring. If they can pick up wickets uh, indeed. Because wickets certainly is what they'll be hunting up. Especially in this power play. Hector to continue. Short, wide, to wide. And wide signal by umpire Vicky Daniel. And of course, you cannot afford to give away bonus runs, as it were, to the Jamaicans. They're going to be glad of anyhow they come. But you have to keep pressure on them. You have to bowl as many dot balls because we've seen once 
battles are contained, they sort of get pressured and, and look to bang their way out of it. Played well to that square leg boundary. The field they gave chase, Melissa Clark. She'll pull it in. Well inside. They'll pick up two. Bit too straight there from Hector. Nation able to just walk it easily in that vacant gap. And these two trying to capitalize on every moment to squeeze a single, even if it's not there. Some adjustment being made to the field. Now using a third man and a fine leg. Oh, that's a beautiful shot from Shidi Nation. Down the ground in style. And that's her first boundary in the sentence. Well played to her. Making it look so easy, so confident. Coming forward and just driving straight back. Eerily, but to the right of the bowler. Who had no chance of getting there. And for the field adjustment is being made is or oh, she's going to collect something. Yeah, for she's, the substitution. she's going off um Clark. Yeah, so Moses is coming on the field now. Two fielders back, of course. We're in the power play. Deep third and fine leg. delivery in between bat and pad it's a good comeback from Hector after being smashed down the ground for four indeed and she'll have to keep putting on pressure the Jamaicans they are quite comfortable quite confident but the Lee was there carrying a high level of confidence as well much with offer on that occasion and they will definitely have to limit these wides tighten up too so far in this over one hundred and seven runs to get in one hundred and five balls easily gettable Driven nicely, but straight to Amanda Edwards, a short cover. Extra cover field there. As it, as immediately you notice Nishan has found her timing in this, this match. She's seven of eight deliveries now. She'll want to push on and get her side in a position to win this game. And they're looking. If there's the slightest chance of a misfield, you get the impression they're going to pounce on it. Of course, and, and these are two experienced batters in the middle. So you expect that sort of awareness from them. That one was bowled slower from Hector. And all she did was use, just guide it nicely, pass a point fielder. So well done to Nation to pick up a second boundary in this over. Claxton diving for all that she was worth, but she couldn't get a hand to it, couldn't get near it. Yeah, so 12 runs coming off that third over. Jamaica 22 for one now. Very good over for the Jamaicans. this stage the leewards were 22 for one sorry 20 for one the leewards were the jamaicans are 22 for one so basically neck and neck so far it's yet early days that's a live ball with a second over in the power play she had a pretty good start just three runs coming off her first over two fielders back long on and 
that feel uh, just forward of square. And that wall you mentioned, Stacey, and on the offside. Yes, and we've seen Rashada, Rashada Williams. He hasn't been shy of trying to get it over the infield throughout this T20 Blaze tournament. And I applaud her for that. But that is an opportunity to score once you can execute well. Some adjustments being made. So a slip comes in now. Just three fielders on the onside. And she cannot get too straight here, Liebird. Looks to run it down, Rashida Williams. Interesting choice of shot, especially now that the slip has come into play. And the old field has been fairly quick. You've seen balls tearing off at the boundary. Yeah. And she knows that once she would have guided it past that first slip, she probably could have gotten two and maybe it might have reached to the boundary. Full, two full. Luckily for her, it's just a single. One from the over so far. And the captain will want her to continue. If she could give her three dot balls, throw in a wicket with that, she'll be the happiest woman on the, on, in the world. Would be Amanda Edwards, but easier said than done. Sweeps it and sweeps it well, Nation. It's a shot that she plays very well. And I was just saying, Liebord cannot be too straight because there are only three fielders on the onside. They had actually moved the, the slip, did they? And put a backward square. But she didn't have a prayer. Drifting was Liebord and paying the price for it. I say yes, I stand to be corrected. There are four fielders now there. Slip came out for nation. This time she tries to guide it into the short third area, but goes straight to Jazara Claxton. Looking to sweep again. Doesn't make connection, but still manages to get a single to end the over. Six from it. Jamaica, 28 for one. And Lee was. So Kimberly Anthony, new bowler for Leeward Islands, replacing Shawnisha Hector, who picked up that wicket of Natasha McLean in her first over. Keep her up to the stump. Too short to start. She gets away with it. A good hand there by Tonya Martin in the cover area. Keeps it to one. Definitely. Very good looking shot. Bad ball, but a very good stop as well. Too short and too wide. Cannot afford to bowl that with the field that's set. Had that beaten, it would have been easily four runs. Drives it, but straight to extra cover. Amanda Edwards. As with the pace that she bowls, Kimberly Anthony. She needs to be fuller to these batters. Cannot afford to be short and wide. 
Yeah, right there. That's a good delivery. Almost chopping it back exactly. onto her stump there, Rashida Williams. Possibly hearing you, telepathically or otherwise. Well, what's good, you know, a lot of these players in the tournament, they're learning as they go, and you want to see that. If you are a fan of cricket and, and by extension, a fan of West Indies, you want to see the players learning, no matter which team they're representing. Fuller, but, but too wide, certainly. So it's good to see Kimberly Anthony. She is a young, young lady. It's good to see her learning her craft, figuring out the areas to bowl as she goes from, from delivery to delivery. Indeed, just 18 she is. Her mother is here from Antigua. She has been here from the beginning. Yeah, that's okay. That's a good line. That's a good line, a good length as well. Rashida Williams, she's very experienced. She's able to work it down to the long arm boundary where she get one. And the Jamaicans, they are approaching this in a business-like fashion. We haven't seen them taking any risks, really. And there's no need to 94 to get in 92 balls. Nicely walked again. Just play it around, picking up the singles. You'll get a wide here and there, and you will get a boundary here and there. Yeah, that's how they've operated throughout both tournaments, Jamaica. Very business-like. I like that term. That's how they've gone about things. They did slip in the last game against Guyana in the 50-over tournament. Looking for a quick single, it's certainly not on. And today they're looking to put put the wrongs right and finish off on a high, winning all games in this tournament as the over comes to an end. They're 32 for one. And uh, Dr. Shallow, president of Cricket West Indies, he was here for the Super 50 overs and he did indicate that come October this year, Six females from each of these franchises will be given retainer contracts. Yes, and that's certainly a brilliant move. A really great move by the West Indies Cricket Board to have each territory award contracts to six deserving players. You will get to see the benefits of that coming through in these tournaments. I mean, we have been talking about the things that they've done wrong, these, these young ladies, but we also have to remember not a lot of cricket has been played domestically in some of these regions. E exactly. So what we're seeing here, going forward, we should be seeing a different product in the years to come. Jazara Claxton with ball in hand. It's driven firmly. And once it beats that fielder, she does well to get down there. Roselle Liebord certainly saving a boundary there. Indeed. Diving away to her left. Yes, with six players being awarded contra contracts, it, it, will definitely, it will definitely see some improvements from a lot of these players. And it will also encourage the countries, the domestic territories, to have more cricket being played. Tries to pull it. Huge appeal, a bit too high, one might think. She looks to run out. Rashida Willi Williams was diving in. Makes her ground quite comfortably. Could have been overthrows there. <laughs> yeah, but she was diving frantically. And indeed, ultimately, this will produce greater numbers in terms of select selection for the West Indies team as well. Yeah, definitely. So a lot has, has been done for these women. I mean, I have been a part of this tournament and I remember the days when you were playing for next to nothing. You know, you just come to the tournament, you, you <laughs> hardly anything to talk about in terms of um, funds. Why delivery there? But now we are seeing these women moving to a professional level. So now you're being paid to play professional cricket. So I must applaud West Indies, Cricket West Indies for their initiative in and growing female cricket in the Caribbean. And speaking about payment, the ladies will be getting the same pay like the men. Yes, and to add to that, this is the first time as well in the history of the women competition that there's, a, there's prize money up for grabs. You know, 
when we were, we were at Jamaica, they've already secured $20,000. 20, yes. Yep. For the 50 over format as well as $10,000. 10, <laughs> <laughs> Guyana <laughs> was second place. Mm. They secured 10,000 US for second place and they they're hoping that some results can go in their favor to at least get that second place prize once more. I believe the words they would like to be second but not necessarily for the money. Yes, that'll be good but too wide. Cut well but good hand as well by the substitute fielder McCoy. McCoy. But actually she's in the squad, Tineta McCoy. Yes, Tineta McCoy, yes, she's playing today. I beg your apologies. Fielders, players out. Cheyenne Moses was actually the substitute fielder for Melissa Clark, who is now back on the field. And I think the way cricket wisdom is they're really working on addressing that gender gap because you ladies when you're going on especially long trips will be flying first class as well driven formally lots of chairs for that but it's just a spectator sketch <laughs> <laughs> it works every time <laughs> let's hit formally into the ground And the spectators and petitions generally will be hoping that Jazara can work some magic. The way things have been going with her, persons may very well be predicting that she'll bowl three overs at max on the trot, on the trot maybe two. So I six overs completed, power play done. Jamaica 38 for one at the same stage. Leeward Islands, they were 42 for two. Indeed, so. Sick umpire signaling end of the power play. Moses is back on. And was a lie, but is it? She's going perhaps a little niggle from that brilliant dive she saved earlier. Preventing a four. So Anthony to continue. Bowled a decent over to start. Just four runs from her first. The field is spread now. They're using just three fielders out. Long on. Cover. And mid wicket. What I would have really liked to see for both competitions is some female students, particularly primary school, grade five, grade six, attending even one, one inning of these games. The challenge with that is, however, this I'm is the sports year, sports term. Yeah, I was in the black hole, dug out well by Nisha. And they would have lost a lot of class time for the various competitions. And the Rams Inter School Champ Primary School Championships. This one is played out to the field at point. A bit of misfield there by Claxton. Allows them to come through for one. Yes, I agree with you there. Troy, but you live here. You should be you should have been able to pull a string here and there <laughs> to get some young females into um to watch some of these games. Perhaps I didn't try hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> Beating the edge there of nation. Well, you keep that in mind for next time. Definitely. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you, Troy. <laughs> okay, I'll work on that. <laughs> I think that could only help it and especially when you're gonna see people from your own country playing. You know, that will inspire you. Maybe we, were that to have been done, some one student, one child would say, Mommy, Daddy, I want to play cricket for the Leewards or West Indies. It all starts with a dream, with a spark somewhere at some point. Full delivery. Driven, but 
just for a single. Hector and the boundary there. Oh, a bit ah. of a misfeel. They come through for Ooh. one. I think she shot it. Yes, she is. Yes. A suicidal. Second in the end. Sees the back of nation. My goodness. Wow. A poor out piece of, of fielding. Out of nowhere, they pick up a wicket. Uh, and a brilliant piece of fielding in the end of the same poor field piece of fielding. Yeah, direct hit. From Captain Amanda Edwards coming in there like superwoman for her team. Nation shot, no doubt. Very well shot. No doubt at all. So a second wicket goes down for Jamaica. 40 for 2 now. And the West Indies will be glad with that. We thought it was a very bad piece of fielding resulting in giving away a run. But that run never did come. Instead of wicket was had. Yeah, the ball didn't really go anywhere, but the, the bowler wasn't paying a lot of attention to where the ball was. So both fielders thought it was an, an opportunity to sneak a single, but Captain Amanda Edwards swooped in there. She was always aware, she was always wary of what was going on, and she got in there quickly. And most important thing, it was a direct hit. She had all three stumps to aim at, and she didn't make a mistake. Yeah, long walk back for Shidi Nation. She's disappointed by that. Still not off the field as yet. Captain Stephanie Taylor joins Richard Williams. And the Leewards, they won't mind at all. Yeah, Leeward Island should think that this is an opportunity for them to get into that middle and lower order for Jamaica, who hasn't really produced a lot for them in this tournament. We've already seen that they have five experienced batters at the top so leeward islands jamaica jazara claxton running into ball two and i like this from captain amanda edwards just got the wicket and she's decided i'm gonna bring two feelers into the circle because they've scored a lot of runs down the ground jamaica and she's cutting that off and asking them to find other options to score she's thinking indeed and although she'll have even greater confidence with Picking up that wicket. Use oh. of the feet goes through her. Lovely. After a brilliant run out, a misfield by Captain Amanda Edwards. It doesn't have the legs to get to the boundary. But they'll still get two. That shot really deserved four if you ask me. But not having that power. The timing was good. And the man, Captain Amanda Edwards, she put on a valiant chase from the long on position. Yes, Shawnisha Hector, in fact, is who chased that down. Went through the legs of Captain Amanda Edwards. Claxton. There you see now that single that Rashida Williams was getting down the ground easily. It's been taken away, so she's looking for a different option. Looking to use her feet, looking to use her crease. It's a good piece of captaincy from Amanda Edwards, sensing the occasion and setting the field right. Now it's up to the bowler to execute. She's done so, so far in this over. There's a fielder there on the boundary. So it'll just be one run. And it seems as if Jazara, she has increased by maybe a half a yard of pace properly warmed up perhaps inspired by what has been happening around her yeah i've noticed that from claxton starting from the first game against barbados she always wants to put her hand up for the big moments in the game and this is a big moment these two batters here in the middle you know they'll be thinking to themselves, let's get one more here quickly and then get Henry in early. And then they'll be saying to themselves, we believe we're in with a shot. Jamaica, Stephanie Taylor, with all her experience, will certainly be looking to take things deep. Nicely driven, sweetly timed, but just for one. To get off the mark. And indeed... And the, the business-like approach by the Jamaicans continue. 
and a lot being asked of the just turned 18 year old Jazara Claxton and she's really a sport always willing to put up her hand oh lovely just past the outstretched arms arm of Shanisha Hector with some power now from Rashida Williams down the ground lofted shot four and you said it earlier she isn't afraid to go over the top and going over the top was there she was Rashida picking up a boundary and looking very easily about very easy about it easily done yeah, it's been a productive shot from her as the over comes to an end. They are now 49 for two. Dad! Dad! Is that real? Well hit! Away it goes! Eight overs down, Jamaica 49 for two. Stefani Taylor on strike to Kimberly Anthony. Nice to walk to that vacant square leg region. Cheyenne Moses com comes around, does well. And that's the challenge with setting a field. You bring the fielders in to cut off the singles, you create spaces. You go through these spaces, get boundaries, and then you try to fix that. It's really finding the ideal balance. Oh, hit in the air. The field is coming around. I don't know. Oh, she almost gets there. Extremely she can't save the boundary either. Extremely valiant effort. Running from all the way in the long on position to long off. She got a hand to it. Just couldn't manage to hold on. She needed to get that wicket, so I applaud her effort for going to try to get the wicket. Shanisha Hector. Unfortunately, it was spilled. That would have been such a wonderful wicket for the Leeward Islands and the young Anthony as well. Yeah, Anthony has bowled well. She's learned how to go about things in this innings to these batters. Doesn't have a lot of pace. She's been wicked to wicked. And that's really smart bowling from her. Not, not giving them room to free their arms with her pace. And Taylor lives to fight another day. So it's Rashida Williams, in fact, who was put down. Well, you really can't fault the effort of Hector. She had to go for the catch. They need to pick up wickets. She did try. Unfortunately, it went for a four. Now they sent back send back Saxena. So the four feelers out. Cover, long on, long off, and mid wicket. And no doubt the, the Leewards team will be somewhat inspired by that opportunity. Yes, it didn't materialize. And they will hope that another opportunity will come and they'll be able to grab it. Walked into the onside. But there's protection there. They come back for two. That fielder was a bit slow to get to the ball. And Stefani Taylor and Rashida Williams, with all of their experience, aware of that, come back for two. So smart running, 58 for two after nine overs. And being very vigilant. They're running the first one hard. They are always looking for an opportunity for the second. They are assessing and analyzing quickly and executing beautifully. Yeah, 67 required from 66 deliveries. So the run rate is not out of hand. The run rate required, that is. It's not out of hand for Jamaica. And the boys. So a change of bowler, Captain Amanda Edwards. 
into the attack now, replacing Jazara Claxton. And we'll have to say, Skipper Edwards entrusting Jazara with the last two overs. Especially the last over, the death. That is a very bold move. A lot, it shows a lot of confidence. And like you so rightly said, Zazawa putting up her hand, accepting the challenge. Too much room. Play to the offside. You see both batters running hard for that first single. That's what you want to see, especially in a T20 format. They always have to be looking for that opportunity for a second run. So they start off quite quickly for that first one, and it's just looking to see if there is a misfield somewhere. Ah, too wide, yeah. So they're sending back Claxton to long off for Rashida Williams, who has shown a lot of intent to hit down the ground aerially. time plays it along the ground and the Jamaicans they just continue to pick away pick away at this total not the biggest of totals what is work this time just for a single I really like the approach. They are not under any pressure. 64 runs to get in 62 balls. With offered but not accepted. Gonna get close enough to get that away for a boundary. Played with no power to short cover. Extra cover that is. So 10 of us completed. We'll have a drinks break. Jamaica, we are 62 for two.
We are now back after the water break. And Rennie's voice, she will be showing some dexterity. Known for her keeping, and she has done some bowling in this tournament. Yes, and she has a knack for picking up big wickets, actually. If you go back to that first game, she picked up that big wicket of Kaisi and Knight. And in that game against Guyana, she picked up two big wickets, Shemaine Campbell and Shabika Gajnavi. So the captain very confident that she can get the job done. And just bringing Williams forward, playing that one down into the long arm region, picking up a single. Lee Woods would be hoping for another wicket here. I certainly am, but since Tafani Taylor has come to the crease, she has exhibited this sort of calm, cool presence. And I think that's what Jamaicans need. She's been scoring freely as well. Hasn't picked up a boundary as yet, but has been getting herself in by way of singles. And they will be thinking that's okay because they're not really under any pressure. And sweeping backward of square. Picking up a second run is Williams. The leading run score in this version of the game. Opening and keeping wicket. That's something that would have been unheard of a few years ago. But extremely popular in the short version of the game. It's now the end of the over. The 11th over, 66 for two. Just 59 to get in 55 balls. Extremely gettable, Stacey Ann. Yeah, Jamaicans are in no trouble here in terms of the run rate, the, the run rate required, that is. Beautiful sunshine here at Warner Park. The shadows are already stretching. It's a very slight breeze outside, as indicated to the feather fags we are seeing off to our right, which are really there for the sponsors of the own National Football League, Premier League. One. Uh, Edwards bringing back herself on and pulling that one through the mid wicket and picking up a boundary. Yeah, too short. Taylor getting in position quickly and just helping herself to a boundary, hitting it over the head of Renee's Boyce and short mid wicket. Definitely not something the skipper would have wanted to happen. But coming very coming back very good with that ball. And the Leewards still need to keep that confidence. Wide, an appeal for stump. But the umpire not interested. The partnership has been developing nicely between these two, 30 from 26 runs. 26 balls, 31, 26 balls. As we are hearing the horns from a ship, one of the two ships in the harbor. <coughs> Alerting all passengers. And this one is played 
down to the third man boundary. It crosses now. A lovely shot. Yeah, a shot that is representative of how calm and composed she is, has been since she's come to the middle. Just waited on it, a bit of wit, and just delicately played it past that fielder at shot backward point. Shazara Claxton who ran for all that she was worth, but couldn't cut it off. So that's two boundaries so far in the over plus a wide. Skipper elegantly playing that one down to the long off, long on, long off region. And I sort of get the sense that maybe the heads of the leewards seem to have dropped a little. The Jamaicans picking up singles at will, basically. Seventy-six for two at the end. Seventy-seven for two at the end of the twelve over. Boys to continue from the CA Paul Southwell Media Center end. Tickling that one around the corner for a single was the leading one scorer, or the skipper that is. No, the leading one scorer, Rashida in the tournament. Extending her lead at the top of the table. Oh, so comfortable, so cool, so calm. Is Taylor coming forward, driving that one down to the long half, picking up a single. Backward point, cover, extra cover. Ah, lackadaisical feeling by Jazara. Offering the Jamaicans another single. Four singles so far in the over. There's a saying we have here in sync. It's 1-1 one, one full basket. Yeah, well, that's all the Jamaicans need to do at this point. Whipping that into the onside is Rashida. She's looking for two. The captain obliges. She gets home safely. That was really well played by... Rashida, just use her wrist to turn it into the arm side and picks up two quite easily as it wasn't hit with any power so they challenged the fielders on the boundary. Leaning and trying to crack that past the fielder off I in the extra cover position. Not being successful and it's the end of the 13th over. 83 for two. The Jamaicans. As we see one of the two cruise ships, camera showing the path in the shores of St. Kitts. Have you been on one of these stores, Stacey, Ann, as yet? One of those ships? Yes, ma'am. No. <laughs> 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 I... I, I don't think I'll ever go on a cruise ship. I know they say you only live once, you have to mm. experience as much as possible, but I'm not a fan of boats. I'm not a fan of planes either. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how traveling is working for me, but. <laughs> Some may argue that the boats are a lot safer than on land, cars even. But I haven't been on one as yet. You won't see me on a cruise ship anytime soon. 
And Edwards, she's going to continue her penultimate over from the Lozak Road end. We have to wait for the signal. It's actually a leg by. That one was drifting down the, the leg side, coming off the pad. Umpire Wilson waiting for the acknowledgement of the scorers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Amanda, <laughs> Amanda Edwards was ready to bowl. <laughs> She couldn't look at the umpire. The umpire <laughs> was just signaling like by and she was running in ready to bowl. <laughs> yeah, she realized, hey, wait, there's something isn't right here. <laughs> Something's missing. Someone's missing. <laughs> ready now for the action. Playing straight come, back. Is Williams. Ball. Picking up a singer. Yeah, I mean, it's forty one now required oh, from 41 delivery so 40 from 40 so amanda edwards and new islands they should be thinking to themselves how can we squeeze jamaican the jamaicans here how can we create pressure on them uh beautifully executed from taylor perfect gap finding it will challenge the field on the boundary and crashes into it now for well executed four indeed but if she's thinking about that, that is certainly not a way. And uh, as a skipper, she might have be saying, telling herself, oh gosh, that's not we, what we want at this time. But she'll have to go back and fight. She has to keep her head up. She has to marshal her troops. She has to lead from in front. Two point four, three overs, 20 runs. Pulling that one is skipper through mid wicket. Getting back. Yeah, drag down and punish there from Stefani Taylor. You cannot bowl shot to a person of this class. Just showing all her class there, Taylor. Getting in position quickly. And just hit taking the aerial aerial route above short mid wicket. And the fifty comes up now in forty balls for the Jamaicans. Fifty partnership that is as these two continue marshalling on oh, oh beautiful <laughs> grace personified from stefani taylor look at that delightfully played depth touched just getting it past the keeper showing all her class and all of her skills stefani taylor in this knock so far guiding that one caressing it even down to the third man boundary yeah, and all of a sudden she has a strike rate of over 160 stefani taylor and it's three in three for the jamaicans three boundaries in three balls very very expensive over for the leeward islands much to the delight of the jamaicans yeah 15 runs coming from that over Jamaica, 98 for two. And the sense in victory is just around the corner. Oh, that is beautiful, Stacey, and broad-sided view of the ship. A few weeks ago, we had the privilege of having the last largest cruise ship icon of the seas making its inaugural call here to, to St. Kitts. And that was a delight for the Kittishan and the Vision people. As Boyce is continuing and Taylor is just turning that one around the corner, picking up a single. Hey. Is a, if you're a Leeward Islands fan, as well as the Leeward Islands team, you know coming into this match, getting through the top order was key. If they were to pose any sort of threat with the ball to, to, looking to sweep across the line, 
huge appeal but turned down. Yeah, if they were to pose a threat with the ball to Jamaica, they managed to pick up Nation when the score was on 40. And these two have played quite well. Bring back some sort of calm to the dressing room to Jamaica. A hundred up now with that single. And they they're batting intelligently for want of a better expression. These two. They're not under any pressure. Extremely gettable runs. Twenty five in thirty two balls. That's easy pickings. Back up, back up. Taylor picking up another single. And both these players in sight of a half century. Getting back, pulling that one forward of square. Is Williams just getting a a single? Yes, so the over is completed. Just four runs from it. Jamaica, 102 for two. Aldese, Taylor on 32 from 22. And... Uh, Williams and 35 from 42. 18 and 15 away from the half centuries, respectively. 23 runs needed. So it's clear only one of these batters may get to the half century. <coughs> At this stage, do you have a discussion and say, I'll give you the opportunity or how are we going to approach it in terms of the half century, Stacey? The way this Jamaican outfit has played, I don't think either of them will be thinking too much about that milestone. They'll just be looking to get their team home as quickly as possible, finish things off, and say, I have this win in the bag. They wanted a clean sweep. So that's what they'll be thinking about right now, getting it over as quickly as possible. And the presentation ceremony subsequently, immediately after, I should say. Wide to start, Claxton back into the attack. What a lovely take by Baskar down the leg side. And that is an area I think she will have to work on, Claxton. Bowling her first few balls tight. We've seen several occasions where they're a little wide. As is that one again. And she's looking to bowl full and swing it into uh, into the right-handed batter. Unfortunately, just starting it a bit too straight. She's looking for that yorker length delivery as well, tailing into the right-handed batter, but just not executing well so far. But you see the plan that she has. Too wide so far in this over. much better ball yeah she executed that time but still managed to dig it out and get a single the shade of williams we know there was a point you see and when <laughs> a no ball was just a no ball in limited overs and then the free hit was introduced what are your views on doing something similar for whites having a free hit for the whites and you're only able to be out under the conditions of a white my view on that is a free hit is enough for a no ball. I don't think we should go so far. That one is a wide delivery to call free hits on wides. I mean, they already say it's a batter's game, and you just, my goodness. <laughs> 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 Three wides have been bowling this over. Three free hits. <laughs> now, I think you have to give some leeway to the bowlers as well. You know, allow them, will allow them to execute. You know, for example, this is a young bowler just learning her craft. She has 
turned up like she has loads of experience, to be honest, the way she's gone in this tournament with ball in hand. Another wide. But she's still pretty young. We have to understand that. And she's trying to bowl that fuller delivery. Just can't execute well. She did so with one delivery in the over. But imagine if there were free hits to be had of wide delivery. So we must allow the bowler, um, you know, some, some sort of room in this game of cricket. You can't just give everything to the batters. <laughs> what? I, <have> <laughs> I'm I know I'm intrigued to know what your views are. On that. <laughs> I, I have a completely <laughs> different view to that, actually. <laughs> My nicely walk. They'll be looking for two. two. Well run indeed. Yeah, fabulous running. Fabulous running and still looking for the third. third fabulous yeah. running by these two experienced batters in the middle. And Jazari, yes, she needs to keep her head high. And we saw Hector moving from the third man position to the middle off to offer some advice to her. You, you also have to keep in mind, sometimes conditions aren't in your favor as a bowler. With that wide call, sometimes the wind is so heavy, the ball is moving around, you cannot control it. Sometimes it's difficult for you as a bowler to run in, in windy conditions especially, and just hit your line and length immediately. So I think it'll be pretty cruel to add free hits to wides. Might as well just say batters, go ahead and play cricket. It's just a batters game. Don't need bowlers. It'll be pretty cruel, in my opinion, to add free hit to wides. Very sound. Very sound defense of your non-supporting it. <laughs> I still have a different view of that one, actually coming off the edge, the inner edge, and beating the keeper into the boundary for fourth. So very expensive over by Claxton. And a first miss hit from Stefani Taylor. But when it's your day, it's your day. And it's an inside edge that runs away for four. So what are your views on that? Why do you think there should be a move from the ICC to implement free hits for white? Yes, it will benefit the, the batters, but I think a very, very good comeback ball from Jazara. Some 11 runs in the over, and we have, is it the end of the over? We one have one ball. Remaining. And I, I believe that will help to tighten the game, and of course, it is said that people come to the park to see what do a cricket game to see runs scored really and not necessarily wicked stumbling even though I like a good competition between bat and ball. I'll, uh, not to sound too combative but I'll still have to come back here in favor of the bowlers and say at the end the over comes to an end 114 for two there, there are no bowlers in the wall running in thinking they're trying to bowl a wide. They are trying to execute perfectly. But sometimes you just can't line things up, especially some bowlers with the new ball aren't able to line it up completely. There's also the case of sometimes some um, umpires might get it wrong also and say, oh, that's a wide, and then there's a free hit where the bowler doesn't deserve it. But that's another conversation. That doesn't need to come <laughs> up right now. Um, but... In favor of the bowlers, I think it'll be pretty harsh to introduce free hits to wide. I don't foresee it being a move they're going to take anytime soon. But I, I have a suspicion it may happen somewhere down the road in our lifetime. And having said that, I am not in favor of the ball dropping outside the leg stump and not being able to pick up a wicket LBW. Yeah, too wide to start. Roselle coming back from the Caleb Ezra Paul Southwell Media Center end or the northern end. She would have bowled for two previous overs from the Lozaka Southern Road end. Pulling through the mid wicket. Getting two runs is Taylor. That one a little short, getting back.
and being urged on by her teammates. Victory just around the corner. As a matter of fact, some may argue that the fat lady, the proverbial fat lady, is already making her way to the podium. So I've never really been in favor. Yes, I do umpire, and yes, I have to uphold the laws. Ball dropping outside the leg stump. Not being able to pick up a wicket LBW. A bit shard played back to Leibold, who I think puts it down. Look to have been a chance there. Diving That's forward full stretch. And yes, she seems a little mad with herself. Played in the air, just past the outstretched arms of McCoy. They'll get a single. Now you see the way the game is played, going back to your conversation about the wides. And I'm trying to get you to change your mind, but you seem pretty <laughs> firm in your decision. <laughs> but I, I really believe that's something that should be considered. Yeah, but, but the Even error on a test basis. The error for wides are far greater not just in terms of the, the way the bowler delivers or how the bowler go about their planning their overs, but also the conditions that you have to keep in mind. So the error for wide is far greater than a no ball. If you check through, as the over comes to an end, 119 for two, 17 overs bowl, usually you check through a match and you look at the extras column, and when you weigh up wides to no balls, it's usually a lot more wides than, than, than no balls. The error, the error for a wide is far greater than a no ball. But don't you think that may encourage the bowlers to bowl a little tighter? And yes, you're correct. No bowler runs in to say, I'm going to bowl a wide now. Yes, that is true. But the fact that there, there are free hits introduced in the game, no bowler runs in trying to bowl a no ball, but the error still is made. So they still can make the error and bowl wide. And then you're punishing them because they bowl a wide delivery, which they're really not. Basca being introduced for the first time in the match. She comes on at the... It, it's still Boyce that's bowling. So oh, change forgive of me, ends, that's Boyce. Yes, change of Basca is keeping. Boyce being shuffled around. They are really close to victory here for Jamaica. A fitting end to what has been a brilliant display from the Jamaican team. Looking for a quick single. But it Rashida Williams was down in the sweep still. So it would have been hard for her to get up to get down to the other end. So rightly sent back. Taylor on 42. So I'm now thinking if she's perhaps not trying to squeeze a few boundaries. Six needed. A four and a six will do it for her. Beautiful, beautiful Take boy. her to her half. Stop, 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 stop. I was saying I've seen Shane one the all bowling persons behind the back, so to speak, while dropping outside the leg stump. And the Jamaican camp extremely excited. The energy coming from them, you'll think that this game is a very close game. And it still means a lot to them to finish this tournament on a high and play unbeaten. So that's what they're excited about. Yes, the tournament win was already in the, in the bag coming into this game. But it was still so very important to them to play unbeaten in the tournament. Over completed. Two more overs remaining, 120 for two. And they most certainly didn't want to make the mistake they made with the 50 overs. Having won that tournament in four, in, within four matches and losing the fifth.
and five runs to get in all of 12 balls. And no doubt the Jamaicans will be thinking about ending this match in this over. Five dot balls, train a wide or two. <laughs> we don't know. So Hector, the ball her third. Driven firmly down the ground. Is this the end of the game? No, it isn't. Claxton gets a run, cleans up well. I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. They still need five runs. Four runs now. It's 124 that was scored by Leeward Islands, and that 123, 124. So four runs now required. Oh, Boy, that is mag magnificent, magnificent from Stefani Taylor to finish the game. Victory to Jamaica, a fitting end. What a magnificent blow for six to finish things off for Jamaica. Play unbeaten in this T20 tournament. Just dropping short of her half century, but that is secondary. Her thing was making sure her team gets over the wall. And the Jamaicans, they didn't wait for the Leeward's team to come in. They actually went out and greeted them. And McLean symbolically grabbing a stump. <laughs> <laughs> Aware that they'll be needed for the final match tonight. Yeah, so congratulations to Jamaica again for doing the double. And congratulations to them especially for playing unbeaten in this T20 tournament. A well-led side. And, and they deserved it. They deserved both of it. The defending champions, Barbados, not having a very good show this year. Losing two key players. Skipper Haley Matthews, strong with bat, ball, and feeling. She was in the IPL. And Shakira Selman, who would have gone into retirement. And yes, some young players Barbados produced. But they, we had some very good cricket in both tournaments. A lot of bright prospects being shining through. And the formal end of ceremony, greetings and salutations and congratulations now happening. And perhaps those two little children would have heard our discussion earlier there running onto the field. And maybe, and maybe that's the young Stacey and King out, out on the field. <laughs> <laughs> But the Jamaicans, they don't have champagne, so they're using water, trying water, not all players, <laughs> as part of their celebrations. And no one is paid. Manager, coach, physio.
there was just the one match in this T20 blaze that was affected by weather. weather. We had quite a lot of rain a few weekends back. As a matter of fact, the it was a city 50 over. Only 10 overs were lost. We're hoping for lovely weather tonight and it is shaping up to be that way. That final match will be starting at 6.30. And the other rebel, Samuel Duggins, Minister of Sports et al. Being greeted by the officials from the Cricket West Indies. And we're just waiting for the ceremony to start in a few minutes. And this was indeed a very, it has been, we're winding down, one match left in the, 50, the T20 Blaze, and it has been a very good competition. Persons will remember this tournament for quite a few reasons. And Ambassador Kenny Douglas, Ambassador for Sports, he is making his way towards the Honorable Minister. So he too appears will be part of the ceremony as we see the Jamaican team making their way towards the presentation area extremely jubilant are they the Jamaicans and why not they played well. They have a perfect record in the T20 Blaze. They've earned themselves 10,000 US dollars for winning this championship. In addition to the 20,000 US dollars they earned for winning the Super CG4 50 overs. So they are walking away from, with this, from this tournament. 30,000 US dollars heavier. And they are enjoying the moment, clapping, dancing, singing. every moment of it are the Jamaicans And Captain Taylor, she's now receiving her check, winner's check, champion's check, US $10,000. And Ambassador Douglas. He will now be distributing medals starting with Skipper Taylor, the leading one scorer, Rashada Williams, Shady Nation, 
she collects her medal. Henry. And one of the amazing things about this tournament is the number of teenagers, teens and twenties, that participated and did well. Cricket West Indies needs to be proud. Ambassador Kenny Douglas, who is also from the same community as Jazara Claxton, Sandy Point, which is 10 miles west of Bastia, in the vicinity of Brimstone Hill, which is a World Heritage Site, UNESCO World Heritage Site, Gibraltar of the West Indies, it is called. management and technical staff now receiving their medals and collecting their second check the Jamaicans they would have won the CG Daffabets Blue Waters women's super 50 overs cash prize of US $20,000 for the winner. And they've just performed the double CG United, Daffabet, Blue Waters, T20 Female Blaze. And the Minister of Sport, the, Honor Etal, the Honorable Samuel Duggins, being escorted out by, this is Jackie Delaney, pres Vice President of the St. Kitts Cricket Association. And Minister Duggins will be handing over the championship trophy to Skipper Taylor of Jamaica. Yeah, congratulations again to Jamaica once more. It's been a complete team effort. Their skills and their unwavering spirit have truly paid off for them in the most glorious way, seeing them win double hair at Warner Park St. Kitts. Well, let's side. Lots of experience, especially in the top order. You know, posing with the Honorable Samuel Duggins, the Minister of Sport et al. They've worked hard. They played well. And they're walking away victorious. Congratulations to the Jamaica female team. A very good example of female cricket in the West Indies. And here is the champagne now being popped. Really enjoying themselves, the Jamaicans. And why not? They did the double. Well, we're going to be signing off now, Stacey, and until we get back at 6.30 for the final match in this CG United Daffabet Blue Waters T20 Female Super Blaze 2024.